Hello, I'm Andrew Zeich, and this is Eye on Scarborough. Hello, thanks for joining us. Today we're talking about the weather station at the University of Toronto Scarborough. It is located on top of the science wing. The weather station is composed of six distinct sensors that are responsible for measuring a range of atmospheric variables useful for understanding our environment. The first sensor we'll look at today is a thermometer. It measures air temperature. What you are seeing is not the actual thermometer, but a protective radiation shield. It allows air to interact with the thermometer while reflecting incoming solar radiation. Rather than an alcohol thermometer, which you're probably familiar with, this weather station is equipped with a platinum resistance thermometer. The resistance of the platinum metal changes in a predictable way with varying air temperatures. A small charge is sent through the thermometer. The data logger measures the resistance on that charge and converts it to temperature in degrees Celsius. The probe also has a sensor for measuring relative humidity. Relative humidity describes the moisture content of the air relative to saturated conditions. The next sensor is a barometer. It measures the barometric pressure of the air. Air enters the little tube attached to the barometer and exerts a pressure on the silicon membrane inside of the sensor. The degree to which the air bends the membrane provides a relative measure of air pressure in kilopascals. Changing pressure can forecast short-term changes in weather. Falling barometer measurements can signal that bad weather is on the way. This is the pyranometer. It measures incoming solar radiation. The station uses a thermopile pyrometer. Think about how warm it feels outside when the sun is out, and how much cooler you typically feel at night, or if it is cloudy. The main difference is the presence of incoming solar radiation. The thermopile pyrometer utilizes a black carbon surface that readily absorbs solar radiation. With more sunlight, the hotter the black surface gets and the greater the electrical current it generates. This is converted to an incoming solar radiation measurement in watts per meter squared. The next two sensors measure wind conditions. Unlike the other measurements we have discussed so far, wind is a vector. This means it has both a magnitude and a direction. The anemometer is a propeller on the front of the apparatus measuring the wind speed in kilometers per hour. The fin apparatus behind the anemometer points it into the dominant wind direction. The fin position relative to the reference box, which faces due south, is measured and converted to a wind direction in azimuth degrees. Our last sensor measures precipitation. This is a tipping bucket rain gauge. The protective white cylinder funnels precipitation into the tipping bucket apparatus. Rain is directed by the smaller funnel into one of the two buckets, which we know holds a volume equivalent to 0.25 millimeters of rain. When the bucket fills up, it tips, allowing the other side to receive precipitation. This information is converted into a signal by using liquid mercury inside a glass bulb at the pivot point of the apparatus. When the bucket tips, the mercury completes an electrical circuit and sends a signal to the data logger, which records 0.25 millimeters of rain. This is the data logger. It's the brains of the operation, storing all of the weather variables and calculating a few more, like dew point temperature and humidex. The data logger is connected to a backup battery in case of a power outage at UTSC. A network link connects the weather station to the school network, through which it is continually sending data to the weather server in the environmental science and chemistry building. Here, the wire technician carefully monitors the function of each sensor and overall station status. Looks good. Hourly weather records dating back to 2013 are publicly available on the web server. And you can follow the UTC station on Twitter where it posts current conditions multiple times each day. Thanks for joining us on an episode of Ion Scarborough. This is Andrew Zai signing off.